in our Pythagorean identities that we're going to be looking at today, there are um, there's three of these that all come from the first Pythagorean identity. So if you memorize one of these and then learn how to change it into the others, that's all you have to do. And this goes back to when we discussed unit circle. Uh, I was working toward the whole porch, the whole purpose of me doing unit circle was we could get to this identity. The sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. All right? And that's going to uh, that's going to be with us all the way through things. Sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta equals 1. This is the foundational trig identity. Now, out beside that on your uh, formula sheet, kind of draw an arrow up at an angle a little bit because there's two sub-identities to this that, that are equally important. They both come from this one, but it's extremely important to be able to recognize that from this identity, the sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of theta. All right, where did I get that? Where did that come from? How did I get that? Subtract cosine squared from both sides, and we get sine squared of theta equals 1 minus the cosine squared of theta. And then I think you guys could probably guess what a second <coughs> sub-identity to this one would be. What, what would it be? Cosine squared equals 1 minus the sine squared of theta. Now it's going to be very important to learn to recognize those two things. If you see 1 minus cosine squared, I need you to think sine squared. If you see 1 minus the cosine squared, excuse me, 1 minus sine squared, I need you to think of cosine squared. If you see 1 minus the cosine squared, I need you to think of sine squared. One other thing that's worth pointing out here, 1 minus cosine squared and 1 minus the sine squared are both difference of squares, right? So they could both factor, right? What's 1 minus cosine squared of theta factored? 1 minus cosine theta, 1 plus cosine theta, right? Are y'all with me? Then 1 minus sine squared is 1 minus the sine of theta, 1 plus the cosine, 1 plus the sine of theta. So we're looking for conjugates, we're looking for uh, difference of squares in these identities when uh, we're, we're doing identities involved Pythagorean ones. All right? Now, let's use this same identity. Let's go back. Our parent identity here, the Pythagorean identity, the Pythagorean identity is sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1. Okay? Now, if I go through this and I divide everything by cosine squared of theta, so if we take our original Pythagorean identity and I divide through the entire equation by the cosine squared of theta, something happens, right? What is the sine squared divided by the cosine squared? Tangent squared. And cosine squared over cosine squared is 1. And 1 over the cosine squared is equal to the secant, secant squared of theta. <clears throat> Pythagorean identity number two. <clears throat> right? So all of these identities come from that one identity. Now we're going to look at a couple of variations of this one. If you can go out the side of that number two, and hopefully you left yourself a little bit of room on your identity sheet there. What's two other identities I could get from this one? What is the tangent squared of theta equal to? How would I get the tangent squared by itself? When y'all with me, y'all aren't with me. Subtract one. Just me and Todd today, I guess. Secant squared of theta minus one. 
Now, what is secant squared of theta minus 1? It's a difference of squares, right? It would factor as secant theta plus 1, secant theta minus 1. So if you see secant theta plus 1, secant theta minus 1, we need to be thinking secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared. So those types of, those we need to be familiar with what these Pythagorean identities look like. And then another one that we uh, won't see as often, um, if you isolate the 1 in that original expression, you get secant squared of theta minus the tangent squared of theta. Sorry for the messiness there. Okay, so that's the three, uh, that's an identity and the two sub identities that come from it. Okay, so you need to be able to derive these or memorize these from the original and then be able to move things around. Okay, but when you see secant squared, tangent squared. And that's true in calculus. Does anybody know we don't have any calculus students in here, but. Secant squared and tangent squared are related to each other with derivatives also, cotangents related to the cosecant, and we're going to see that in this final Pythagorean identity. If we take the original Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared, and we divide through by the sine squared, we get our third Pythagorean identity, which is 1 plus cotangent squared of theta equals the cosecant squared of theta. So that's our third Pythagorean identity. It comes from the original, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, and it has two sub-identities as well. What could we isolate here? we get the cotangent squared by itself, that means we would have to subtract 1, right? So that'd be cosecant squared of theta <coughs> minus 1. And if we isolate the 1, we get 1 equals cosecant squared of theta minus cotangent squared of theta. So 3 from one. And all of these come from the original Pythagorean identity, which is the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals one. So if you know how to manipulate those things, then you can memorize just one of the Pythagorean identities and get all of them. But you have to remember what the process looks like. Okay? Do y'all have those written down on your identity sheet? And we are ready to use these identities to do things like this. Secant squared of theta minus tangent squared of theta is equal to 1. Now, as in all of our um, trig identities, there's going to be more than one way to work these problems. Just, there just is. Okay. Um, secant squared of theta minus tangent squared of theta equals 1. I want to kind of focus today on using the Pythagorean identities to, to get this done. All right, so any ideas on what we could subtract, what we could substitute here to make this happen? Look on your Pythagorean identities list. What can we substitute? Can we make a substitution for secant squared, tangent squared? You said that tangent squared equals what? One minus secant squared. So in the place of tangent squared, we can do one minus the secant squared of theta. Is that is that an identity? That's not an identity. Tangent squared is. secant squared minus 1, not 1 minus the secant squared. Okay? You may have said that. I wrote it wrong. 
All right, what could we do here then? Secant squared minus secant squared is going to go away. And you distribute the negative there, you get plus one. Secant squared minus secant squared is gone and we're left with one equals one. Right? What else could we do? Anybody do it differently? Anybody do it differently? No one did it differently than that? All right, let's go back and look at what's, a, what's an identity for secant squared? What could we substitute for secant squared? We could substitute secant squared is tan squared of theta plus one straight from our identity sheet, right? Using those identities equals one. Now you can see what's gonna happen. Tangent squared minus tangent <coughs> squared is gonna be gone and we're gonna be left with one equals one. So it works the same way. I'm gonna show you one more way as if we needed another one, right? If we go back to our, to our uh, strategies that we looked at last week, what is the secant squared? It's one over cosine squared. Tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. Since I have a common denominator, you can combine these two and get one minus the sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. What is one minus the sine squared? Look at your sub-identities there. What is one minus the sine squared? Cosine squared, right? So the numerator is cosine squared of theta. The denominator is cosine squared of theta. And we got one equals one. Three different ways, and that's not the only three ways. If something is true, there's always going to be more than one way to show that it's true. All right? Have a look at this one. The sine squared of x times 1 plus the cotangent squared of x. Okay. Look at your Pythagorean identities. Do you see anything that jumps off at you? 1 plus cotangent squared. Is 1 plus cotangent squared equal to anything? It's equal to the cosecant squared, right? So you can substitute in the place of 1 plus cotangent squared. We can put cosecant squared of x. Does that help us? Does that help us? Why does that help us? Because, sorry, I mean to grab your leg. It was just, oh, it's better than falling in your lap, I suppose. Let's <laughs> try. All right, how does that help us? They cancel out. What cancels? What's the they? Sine and cosecant are reciprocals of one another, right? But cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared, and the sine squareds cancel, and we're left with 1 is equal to 1. All right. Did anybody uh, do anything different there? Did anybody's initial instincts take them in a different direction on this one? Okay. Nobody? Let me show you what somebody might be tempted to do, and it works. If we go back to our strategy from day one, we'd have sine squared of x times 1 plus cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. Right? Now if we distribute, what do we get? Sine squared of x. Multiply that. Sine squared is cancel and we're left with cosine squared of x which is equal to 1. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. All right. Try this one on your own. See what you come up with. Try this one on your own. 
I walk around, I see that a lot of you noticed real quickly that what we're dealing with on the left are conjugates. And we said that there's a lot of conjugate activity going on with difference of squares. So, or excuse me, with Pythagorean identities, cosecant of alpha plus one times cosecant of alpha minus one is equal to the cosecant squared of alpha minus one. Gosh, you wouldn't have to do this completely went into a different direction here. Cosecant squared of alpha minus one is what we get when we go secant squared of alpha minus <coughs> one. And that is actually one of our sub-identities. Cosecant squared of alpha minus one is equal to the cotangent squared of alpha. And we are done. All right? They went into a, the uh, PowerPoint, took it in a little bit different direction. They made a substitution for cosecant squared. Cosecant squared of alpha is equal to cotangent squared of alpha plus one. That's one of our original identities. And then the plus ones and the minus one cancels out and we're left with cotangent squared of alpha equals cotangent squared of alpha. So either one of those methods will work. All right. Sine of t over cosecant of t plus cosine of t over secant of t is equal to 1. And we haven't mentioned this in a minute, but one of our trig identity strategies is always to work with the most complicated side and get it uh, to equal the simplified side. So obviously we're going to be working with the left side of this one. Any ideas? Any ideas? No ideas? We're drawing blanks or y'all working ahead? You, get, you working at them? Good. I'll leave y'all alone and let you work. Then. Let you put your ideas to practice. Now, I'm not seeing any squares in this one, right? Nothing's being squared. There's no conjugates. So maybe on this problem, we're not going to use Pythagorean identities to start with. Okay. So what strategy might we use in this one? Yeah, use the reciprocal ide identities. The cosecant is 1 over the sine, and the secant is 1 over the cosine. Dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, right? So that's going to be sine of t times the sine of t plus cosine of t times the cosine of t. Which is sine squared plus cosine squared of t. <coughs> And what's the sine squared plus the cosine squared equal to? One. All right. Is everybody okay with this one? Now, there's not going to be another strategy on this problem that is easy to deal with. This is going to be kind of the easiest and quickest and maybe only logical good choice for this problem. This goes back to day one strategies. All right. <coughs> this one's more complicated. Now, this is where Friday's assignment is going to come into play. 
Look at number six on Friday's assignment. Sine of theta plus cosine of theta squared. You have to expand that, right? You have to multiply sine of theta plus cosine of theta times sine of theta plus cosine of theta. In this case, we're doing cosine minus sine. So when you distribute that, foil it, you end up getting what? Who's got it? Did I see you have it, Adam? You end up getting this. Now, I saw a few of you just have the cosine squared and the sine squared, but you're missing the middle term. You've got to remember if you expand a binomial, you get those middle terms coming into play. Okay, so we're doing a little algebra with our trig expression. Now we can see some things that will help us, right? We see that we have cosine squared plus sine squared in that parentheses. What is cosine squared plus sine squared? One. And we can combine the two middle terms. And so that whole parentheses thing there uh, will condense to 1 minus 2 sine of theta cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. Cosine of theta, excuse me. Okay, is everybody with me? And I promise you an identity like this on the quiz on Friday. We have to expand, uh, do a binomial expansion. There's not a whole lot of variations of this problem, so if you can work one, you can work the next, as long as you know what the process looks like. Okay, the one and the minus one there will cancel, and we're just left with plus two sine theta cosine theta over cosine of theta. I, I would expect that you guys would be able to go from this step to that step without showing this. We don't need to show that step. All right. 2 sine theta cosine theta over cosine theta is equal to 2 sine of theta, and you're done. All right. We'll look at two more. Tangent of W plus 1 divided by secant of W equals sine of W plus cosine of W. This one also goes back to one of our day one strategies that we looked at. Separation of fractions, or combination of fractions, because I have one thing on this side equals two things on this side. Okay, so we've got this is one expression because the fraction bar groups it together. And on the other side, we have two things. So we've got two choices on this problem. We can separate the left side, or we can get a common denominator and combine <coughs> the right side. All right, let's separate first. We're going to do it both ways. Separate the left side, we would get what? Tan W divided by secant of W plus 1 over secant of W. And then we're halfway there, right? Because what is 1 over secant of W? Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so 1 over secant is cosine of W. And I'm good. I've got that part. Now I just need to show that this is equal to sine of W and will be golden. What's the process for doing that? 
What's the process of doing that? Right in terms of sine and cosine. That's exactly right. So tangent is sine of W over cosine of W. And I'm dividing that by secant, which is 1 over cosine of W. Now, now watch. If I'm dividing by 1 over cosine, that's the same as multiplying by cosine W over 1. So I'm going to just go ahead and write it as a multiplication. And then what happens with the cosine of W? Cosine of W cancels, and I'm left with sine of W plus cosine of W equals that. And we are done, right? Okay, now I want to show you what this would look like if we condense or if we combine the two terms on the right side. What would I need my denominator to be if I wanted the right side to look like the left side? What would I need my denominator to be? Secant of W, right? So I would need to, uh, on the right side, I would need to take sine of W and multiply it by secant of W over secant of W. And I would need to take cosine of W and multiply it by secant of W over secant of W. I'm running out of space here. I have to write small. All right. A secant is 1 over cosine, right? So when you multiply sine times 1 over cosine, you get sine of W over cosine of W in the numerator divided by the secant of W. And in the next one, cosine times secant, multiplying something times its reciprocal gives you 1 over secant of <coughs> W. And then we're finished, aren't we? Because what's sine over cosine? Tangent plus 1 over secant of W. Now maybe that's a little bit more complicated than doing the separation of fractions on the left, but I think it's uh, pretty slick to be able to use both. All right. Went a little different direction in the PowerPoint. 53. This one's quick and easy if you see it correctly. Does anybody see an identity we can use immediately? You do, Adam. What is it? Yeah, but what's our strategy? Work with the most complicated side. So if you take the least complicated side, in this instance is the right side, and you change that to cosecant squared, I think you're going to have a hard time finishing the problem. Yes, so we need to work with the most complicated side in this case. And because you saw that, I want to show you what it would look like if you did that, because it's doable. But 1 minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared of theta. 1 over sine squared is equal to the... What's 1 over sine squared? Cosecant squared. You need to know these. And the cosecant squared, look on your identity sheet. What's an identity, Pythagorean identity for cosecant squared? 1 plus cotangent squared, and we are finished. Okay, now, Adam, if, if you went with your uh, first instinct there, you said one plus cotangent squared is equal to the cosecant squared of theta, then you'd have to rewrite that as one over uh, sine squared of theta. And then you'd have to use the identity that the sine squared is 1 
minus the cosine squared of theta. So it works that way also. It's just a little bit harder to, to do, I think. But it, uh, you might have gotten it. And if you did, you'd be in good shape. Okay? This goes a completely different direction. Look what this one did. What substitution did they make here? That 1 is equal to sine squared plus cosine squared. A little slick. Cosine squares will cancel. Sine squared is cosecant squared. It's 1 plus cotangent squared. All right, we're not going to have time to work this last example, um, but I want you to look at it. Sine squared of beta over 1 minus the cosine of beta. You have to immediately make the, the substitution that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Now, where would you go from there? We would want to switch it back. At this point, we need to factor. We need to factor 1 minus cosine squared as what? It's the difference of 2 squares. Factors as 1 minus cosine of theta or beta times 1 plus cosine of beta. The 1 minus cosine betas will cancel, and you're left with 1 plus cosine beta equals 1 plus cosine beta. So this is on the video if you wanted to go back and see this, but you will have a problem in homework like that as well. All right? Homework is there.